Hi, hi. Regina, how are you? I'm doing well, and you? Very well, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let me see that I see about 20 attendees, but I think uh, we have about 60 to 80 registrations. So probably they're gonna join us this Saturday. Uh, sorry, we're taking your time for the family time, but uh, hopefully we're gonna have a very good uh, productive uh, webinar. At least it's worth it um, of your time and then attendees time. So hello everyone. I think I'm gonna start and then uh, whoever joins us in the middle, so we will continue, you know, uh, going forward. So hello again, Regina, thank you for joining us today. Thank uh, you for being here. Uh, good evening, good, I'm in, it's 12, 12 noon, I'm in Vancouver, I'm assuming you're in Toronto, Regina, right? That's correct, yeah. How's, how's the weather? Mm, sunny right now, but not too warm. Beautiful, I'm there next week because we have a cadaver course on 27 and 28 in downtown Toronto, so I'm going there on 26, I'll be there for the courses, so whoever uh, is joining us uh, for that course, so we will meet there. So um, we asked you to be with us today because we have this uh, webinar. As I had mentioned to Regina before um, and our students, we are um, focusing on um, solutions for the skin conditions now because a lot of our members for years, they are with us mostly for injectable treatments. But now we are focusing on non-injectables as well. For that reason, we have, first of, first of all, we are making series of webinars in this regard uh, to help our members. Also, we are inviting the uh, companies, famous companies in the field to help us to go through this. Sorry, let me stop my phone. phone. Okay. So, um, and as a part of this activity that we are starting, uh, we want to focus on hyperpigmentation as one of the common uh, conditions that many of our uh, students and members will see in their, in their daily practice to how to deal with that. Uh, the treatments that are helping for hyperpigmentation, we have one uh, webinar today with the approach of chemical peel. I'm, I'm in the uh, um, uh, arrangement of, uh, I'm trying to arrange the same uh, uh, approach for the skincare products for hyperpigmentation treatment, one session for laser and one session for microneedling. So to make sure that we have a comprehensive approach that our members to learn all this uh, from us uh, and they have a good experience. At the same time, when we're going forward, we will uh, introduce the companies are uh, probably the best in their, in, in the Canadian market to make sure that if our students, they wanted to order or um, find, uh, you know, the, 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 they need help, they can directly contact them. So we uh, asked uh, Regina to be with us for today's uh, hyperpigmentation webinar uh, with the approach of chemical peel because uh, she is the exclusive, I mean, her company is the exclusive representative, representative uh, of InnoStatic, very famous and reputable company in the whole world, in Europe, Middle East, uh, and uh, they are distributing their products in Canada. And uh, definitely she will be uh, sharing lots of interesting information about their solutions of chemical peel for hyperpigmentation. Obviously their uh, products, they're covering many, many different treatments, but today we ask her to mostly focus on chemical peel, which is focused on hyperpigmentation. And we will invite her in the future, hopefully for other conditions of the skin that we want to focus on and she will help us to go through this. So the other thing I wanted to say is, uh, first of all that, uh, and we have a course of chemical peel and microneedling together on the 30th, we have an online course, obviously, that explains everything generically, that if you want to understand what is chemical peel, how to apply it, explains about the basics and the application, neutralization, complications, preparation of the patient, aftercare process, everything is an online course. And then also we have a practical hands-on course, which is on 30th. I think we still have a couple of spots in Toronto, Saturday, 30th April. And also we have the week after in Vancouver. Any of you wanted to join, I think there is a promotion 
for that as well. If you wanted to register to take the last spots, also in Congress, again, we will have, you know, static there. You can ask them question. I'm sure Regina will be there in Toronto in July. And that's it. So the, the, what we're going to do today in this presentation, I'm going to go through the hyperpigmentation in general. I have prepared some slides to understand uh, the skin color and then the abnormalities of the skin color, which technically is called, we call it hyperpigmentation, and then the solutions and chemical peel as one of the approaches. And then I'm going to give the, uh, the, the table back to Regina and she will talk about the, uh, uh, the solutions their company offers. Is that good? Can I start? Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So now we see 35 attendees. So good. So let me just share my slides first with you. Are you able to see my slides? Yep. Sorry, I'm sharing. That's a mistake. So I have to start the slides. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so um, we are Canadian Board of Aesthetic Medicine. I'm the director and I am expanding the uh, centers in the West End in Vancouver and Calgary. Um, that's why I've moved here since last year. And my name is Mohsen. Probably many of the members and students know me. So um, so you see the Inostatic Canada, Real Solution of Pigmentation, Chemical Peel Approach. Let me talk about the skin first. Uh, as we know, the skin has three main layers. Uh, some of the references, they believe only two layers, but uh, I just would go with the approach of three layers, epidermis, dermis, and um, hypodermis. In the epidermis, the most common type of cells, which is about 80 to 85% of the cells are cratinocytes. These are the cells that they doing the main protection of the skin. They have something we call it cratin. Uh, so uh, these are the cells that, forming the main structure of the epidermis. We have another cell with the smallest percentage, smaller percentage, we call them melanocyte. They are located in the base membrane or ba basal layer of the epidermis uh, in the connection of the dermis and epidermis. So those, uh, uh, those uh, um, uh, cells are in the deep layer. These are the ones, melanocytes are the ones that are producing something, we call it melanin. And these melanins are responsible for the uh, skin um, coloration. Uh, melanocyte, as I said, uh, they are located in the deepest layer of epidermis, right at the border with the dermis. And uh, they have um, uh, something we call them dendrites. Each of them have up to 36 dendrites. And these dendrites are responsible to transfer the melanin pigments from the melanocytes to the cratinocytes surrounding them. So they can transfer the melanins and then place them into the cratinocyte, cratinocytes. So based on the amount of uh, melanocytes we have, the concentration of melanocytes we have in, the, in every individual skin, and also the amount of activity and the amount of melanin they produce and they place it in the cratinocytes, we either have a lighter skin or we will have a darker skin. The, the individuals, they have darker skins, they have more concentration of melanocytes and also their melanocytes are more active and producing more amount of melanin. As you can see on the left side, I mean, my left side. So you see lots of creatine, uh, lots of melanins are placed in creatinocytes here, much less. So, this is defining darker and lighter skin. So based on that, we have in human something we call it Fitzpatrick scale, which uh, I'm sure many of the members are familiar with that. The lowest number is one and the highest is six. Based on this, uh, this scaling, we can define who has a fair skin, which is the type one. And then we go to the darkest skin in human, which is type six. Based on obviously the the concentration of melanocyte and also the activity of the melanocyte, how much melanin can produce and place it in the keratinocytes and in the epidermis, we will have the darker and darker skin. The reason I put this scale here is I want to uh, make sure that, uh, that you guys know from now that when you want to approach the treatment of hyperpigmentation, always the, the more darker skin, scale three, four, five, and, and six, 
they because they have more potential to make more melanin you always have harder time to treat them you have to be always be careful about uh, you have to be be careful about the treatment might be more resistant for treatment in general hyperpigmentation is much more common in these individuals because the melanocyte is active anyways so the process that melanin is produced inside the melanocyte is also important because the treatment that we have for, uh, for, oh, I see someone here. Okay, sorry. So the, 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 the a process we have, just make him mute. Just give me one second. Okay. Um, Okay, there you go. So the, the process of melanin production inside the melanocytes is important. I don't wanna get into too much physiopathology because that might be confusing and you don't need to know, but it's important because the treatment approaches will be defined based on this. Um, the, the melanocytes, they have a, 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 a material inside, we call them tyrosine. And this tyrosine is, uh, uh, changing to the melanocyte to melanin by an enzyme we call it tyrosinase. So if you have anything that stimulates tyrosinase and then makes more tyrosinase, you will have more melanin production. If you can somehow inhibit tyrosinase or break down this enzyme, you always have a better chance to control the production of melanin and you can reduce the production of melanin. For example, some of the skincare products that we will uh, use them for the hyperpigmentation treatments, their approach is to block tyrosinase. As a result, they will reduce the amount of uh, melanin. They also, also, the other thing I wanted to tell you here is the final production of melanin inside the melanocytes are two types, either eumelanin or pheomelanin. Eumelanin has more tendency to be with the color of uh, red or orange, and pheomelanin is, uh, is more brown to black. Uh, first of all, we can say the, more, the lower scales of the Fitzpatrick, they have more concentration of eumelanin. The higher scale, they have more concentration of pheomelanin. But the other things is important to know is when we are producing or the body produces melanin in an abnormal situation, when we talk about hyperpigmentation diseases, which I'm gonna go through them, the body has a tendency first to produce eumelanin. That's why if you have, for example, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, you usually see the, the, uh, the red-ish orange type of lesion first, and then slowly becomes darker and darker and darker because then pheomelanin is going to be created in a later stage. Here, I'm gonna show you another diagram here. You see that melanocytes are um, uh, stimulated most common stimulant, even though we have internal stimulation such as hormones and different things, aging and stuff, but sunlight is a major and major stimulant. So I see the, the sunlight, the UV rays, they can uh, stimulate the melanocytes and then the melanocytes producing melanin and the melanin are going to be placed inside the creatinocytes and normally or abnormally we will have hyperpigmentation. Uh, if you want to stop this process, for whatever reason you want to treat the hyperpigmentation, you can break this uh, technically this chain. Either you can block the sunlight exposure. So that's why if any treatment you do, anything you do during the, um, anything you do for the process of treatment of hyperpigmentation, if you don't uh, use a good sun protection, probably your treatment is not gonna be as effective. And I'm sure that Regina will talk about that as well. So if you guys wanna start approaching hyperpigmentation, I would definitely recommend your knowledge about sunscreen. Different types of sunscreens in the market has to be really good. I know a lot of you just recommend sunscreen to your patient, that's it. I Oh, you have to use sunscreen, but you have to really get into it. You have a good knowledge. I'm, as I said, I'm gonna invite another skincare product, another webinar we will announce for the hyperpigmentation. And definitely we're gonna go through that and make sure that we have a good understanding of that as well. So the, so the blocking of the UV light is one part of this treatment. And I said, you can block the tyrosinase or any, some of the skincare products, they're working on that area, or you can destroy 
the melanin, which is already there, or melanocytes, or take one layer of the epidermis, which is already full of melanins. These are the other treatments. You mean after production of melanin, you can do many things. Chemical peel approach is that, when removing one layer of epidermis, for example, or some of the deeper ones maybe are able to destroy the melanocytes. They can go deeper. Laser is another approach, which is able either to take one layer of uh, epidermis with melanin, or they can go deeper, non-ablative one, they can go deeper and destroy the melanocyte. So we all working on this chain. If you wanna do any treatment, we have to work on this chain. I'm gonna go a little bit faster. So the hyperpigmented skin is, when I start talking, I keep just talking and nobody can stop me. Sorry about that. So then you see here, this is the abnormal area. This is a region with hyperpigmentation. You see in the stratum basal or that the lowest layer of the epidermis, you have the production of the abnormal melanin and keeps going higher and higher and higher. And you will have the whole area as a hyperpigmented skin. These are the list of causes of hyperpigmentation. I put the sunlight exposure with the red light to make sure that is one of the major and major uh, causes. Genetic, age, pimples, acne scar, topical creams, or, or uh, uh, some of them, uh, matronidating laser itself, even though we use them as a treatment, but they can damage the skin and cause the hyperpigmentation. In general, we, I'm gonna go through it, but, but in general, any damage of the skin can cause hyperpigmentation because when you damage the skin in the process of healing and rejuvenation, there is a chance that more melanin is produced and as a result will cause uh, abnormal hyperpigmentation. We call it PIH. Some of the diseases such as Addison disease, these are the ones that are hormonal related disorders, pregnancy, hormonal changes, taking some medications such as antibiotics or birth control pills, these are the causes. When we look at the hyperpigmentation as an abnormal view, not the normal, so what so far I talked mostly about normal. So the abnormal, we can, depends on the distribution of melanin. We can talk about either it's epidermal or it's extended to the dermis, so it is deeper. So in general, the most common uh, abnormal hyperpigmentation situation we have are either edge spot, which is very uh, interconnected to sunspots, freckles, melasma, and PIH, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. In general, the first two are more epidermal. When it's more epidermal, it means it's more superficial. So obviously the treatment is easier, treatment is not resistant, but when we go to the deeper type of hyperpigmentation, when the melanin has a, has a spread into the dermis layer, Definitely the treatment is deeper, uh, more challenging, more resistant, might need uh, more uh, penetration of treatment. For example, in chemical peel, I'm sure Regina will mention that you need to go with a higher concentration of chemicals. You have to choose the different brands that different, different types that will go deeper to be able to approach the dermis. How do we know that um, uh, is it epidermis or dermis? There is a, a very good device that you can all, all of you can have it in your in your practice called wood lamp. The wood lamp, the, you take a technique, you take a look at the skin. And then, uh, um, uh, so in the skin on the hyperpigmented areas, it will show you um, based on the shade of the color you see of the, of the melanins, more superficial melanins are darker color. And then the deeper ones, which are more in the dermis, they are more grayish color and then the the, the, the lighter, because it's more far from you. This way you can memorize it. So this far from you, you see it in a lighter color. So then, so the ones are more, the more epidermal or more darker, so you can see them. Uh, these are obviously, they, they require an easier treatment and you are expecting to get a better response of the treatment, any type of treatment you use. Uh, and then the deeper ones are more uh, in, the, in the dermis and you might expect to have a more resistant treat, uh, uh, response to the treatment and also probably more aggressive treatment you have to select. Uh, very, very fast I go through the types of, um, types of uh, the hyperpigmentation I just mentioned. The edge spot, which I said very, very interconnected to sun spots. Uh, we call them also liver spots, which have nothing to do with liver, with this technique is the wrong name, but but, but we call them liver spots also. These are brownie, blackish color that you see in older people. You see mostly in the sun exposed areas, uh, arms, legs, face, 
uh, and then and then usually appears uh, as you can say age spot in older individuals and in the sun exposed areas these are the pictures probably you have seen in many of the patients as I said, these are tend to be more superficial and in the epidermal layer. Melasma, one of the most challenging uh, probably patients that you will see and, uh, and you, if you can help them, definitely they will love you. We call them the mask of pregnancy. These are the hyperpigmentate areas, um, usually the bilateral on the face, the most common, but you can see them on forehead, face, and e even stomach. So in the face, they usually tend to have to, to cross the bridge of the nose. Comparing to the sunspots, which usually they're patchy and then they are not connected, but the melasma is, uh, is, is tending to connect over the bridge of the nose and uh, obviously related to pregnancy, birth control pills. And, uh, and um, as I said, in general, patients with darker skin, higher number of Fitzpatrick, uh, Fitzpatrick they have more chance to produce any type of pigmentation diseases such as melasma, because their melanin in general is more active. This is uh, some pictures of the, of, the, of the melasma. And then a PIH, anywhere in the skin that you damage it or the patient damages is under stress, physical stress, chemical stress, laser treatment, anything, there is a chance that during the process of regeneration, the skin produces more melanin, so more uh, um, uh, causing the abnormal hyperpigmentation after dermatitis, after acne, after infection, after injuries. These are some pictures. These are, for example, this left one, these ones after the pimple. I put the examples of PIH. So the hyperpigmented lesions after the pimple um, recovery, this has happened. This is a laser treatment. This lady have had the laser treatment, but because of the stress of damage of the skin that has happened after. Here is somebody has had the physical stress of the wrong shoes. Sorry about that. Oops, 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 where is it? Okay, there you go. Okay, after that, so now has developed hyperpigmentation. The treatment options, um, uh, the lightening creams, which I said they can either destroy melanocytes, some of them, some of them they can uh, inhibit tyrosinase, uh, these are the ones which we're going to go through them in another session. Chemical peel is the one today we're focusing on while removing one layer of the skin or deeper ones, they can destroy melanocytes. Microneedling, mostly microneedling is working on discoloration treatment. Uh, major effect of microneedling for hyperpigmentation is they can, because of making the needle like a holes in the skin, they, they, they tend to... to uh, make more penetration of the, of the products, we want to just make it to the deeper layer. They have a very good effect in that area. Also, they have in general damaging the skin, so there is a chance of regeneration to have a better healing and have less discoloration. Laser also causing the skin re resurfacing, and I'm going to go through them very, very quickly. As I said, lightening creams, um, mostly they're over the counter. Uh, they can help for the uh, for decreasing the pigmentation with different reasons. They mostly have these materials or these ingredients, vitamin C, licorice extract, or the kojic acid, which is a, a mushroom. So they all have this lightening effects, which another session we go through them. Lasery, laser treatments, ablative, non-ablative. Let me see how much time I have. How much time I have. I think I've got. So the ablative ones, the ones that they are um, mostly removing one layer of the superficial epidermis, non-ablative, they can go deeper in one point and they can destroy the melanocyte. So either way, if you wanna use the ablative to remove one layer of the skin, superficially treat the uh, hyperpigmentation, you can, or you can do more aggressive treatment, just go deeper with non-ablative and then destroy the melanocytes. Um, so this is laser, which another session, probably I will go with Dr. Badawi, our laser specialist, one session to talk about that. Chemical peel is the one that we're gonna go through today and we're going to ask uh, Regina to talk more details about that. In general, we have a very good comprehensive course. I have taught it myself and uh, with the help of a, a couple of our instructors, we have live demo. We talk about the whole process of chemical peel. What is chemical peel, how it works, the different, uh, you know, with the different penetrations, examples of the types of products. We don't introduce any company, but we talk about general chemical peel, how it works. Definitely, I recommend if you're interested in this topic, which I think you are, that's why you are here, uh, uh, get that course. 
Um, there is a chemical pill and macroindolin you purchase together. I think, I don't think it's more than $500 or something, even less probably, I don't know. I can check and send you the link. And then you get the access of both courses. And then you pay a little bit extra and come for the practical. If you want to learn it hands-on, which we have it on April 30th, and we have it on um, uh, Toronto and, and May 7th in Vancouver. Uh, so you come there and learn it practically. We have live patients, we bring it, and then we will apply the treatment on, on, on patients. Um, uh, chemical peel, generally, uh, separation of the tissue of the superficial of the epidermis from the rest of the epidermis, you can use uh, a technically acid to do that. You, you apply the acid and you neutralize it. If you wanna know in general, and that rejuvenation effect will have the healing purpose. Uh, this is my last slide. Uh, the chemical peel can, depends on uh, what percentage of the, of the acid you use, the type of acid you use, or how deep the acid can penetrate, you can, target different layers of the skin. You can have very superficial exfoliation by some of the acids such as glycolic or lactic acid or salicylic acid. If you use the same one with a higher percentage, you can go a little bit deeper to the epidermis and take the whole epidermis. You can use TCA or phenol to go deeper to the dermis levels. Uh, as we know that um, as long as you are approaching the epidermis, you don't need a medical director. So even nurses, they can do it. Medical estheticians can do it. But as soon as you use the penetrations or the types of brands that they can go to the dermis, you either a nurse or medical esthetician, you need a medical director to be present as the rules in, in Canada. So um, in the course, we will discuss about that in details as well. I think I'm done. I can take the questions at the end for my part. I think it's better that we, I'm gonna stop my sharing my thing. Oh, now 48 people, very good, very good. So how was it, Regina? Very good, very fast, a lot very of information. <laughs> We're still 27 minutes, oh my God, oh my God. Well, I hope I try to make it very summarized and informative. So now I, I gave you the permission to share your screen if you wanna share your screen with your slides and then you can. Uh, share. I hope the we can keep the questions at the end and then that's it. No. Can you see the presentation? No, not yet. Oh. You have to press the share screen and then I select. did. I did, I did. Probably is going to come. I think I have your slides as well. Maybe I can find them, but. Yeah, I do have it on. So can you see me actually still? Because I'm off. I see you, but not the screen. You don't see the screen. Okay. So let me close this one. It is shared and it's recorded. So it should show. Hmm, interesting. Finish. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work. I was worried about that one because that happened to me before. That's okay. That's okay. Let me try your, your That's stop. okay. Let's, let's, you know what? I have some little pictures here, so don't worry about it. We'll talk about it because we need to go on, right? No problem. So, no problem. so thank you for having me today. Um, as Dr. Talani mentioned to you, I am an educator with the company Nugenarex and we are carrying the InnoAesthetic product line out of one reason, because they're known for their GPS system. It's a, uh, it's a principle of a guidance performance system that actually has a special technology that is patented by InnoAesthetics and it improves the penetration 
of the ingredients into the skin without damaging it, which is important because we don't want to create further issues with the skin. Um, the delivery is also focused to specific cell groups and this enhances the therapeutic um, effects and the uh, ingredients always stay stable. Um, it protects, of course, against degradation as well. So all this together makes a completely safe approach um, inside the skin. And we are talking about four different approaches for the purpose of hyperpigmentation. One of the, them is, of course, a prevention of photoaging, where we need a certain amount of antioxidants. Um, I think my slideshow is on. There you go antioxidants to um to prevent photo damage oh, but sorry sorry that i interrupt you i yeah. i managed to open up my side you tell me the next slide i can just go next for you okay any, yeah, any i'm gonna start i'm gonna start with the bio c it's the third slide actually that is the third product. slide there you go if you yeah. want i can go next this is how it looks like, like Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. it comes in ampules. BioC actually is a product that is com it's a combined action of different gentle acids, and um, they do uh, different things. They boost the epidermal hydration. It reinforces the penetration of a topical um, hyaluronic acid and antioxidants um, to reduce, of course, the free radicals, which would produce more hyperpigmentation. It improves the skin elasticity, firmness, and it boosts also the skin glow. And this is why this one is called also um, the holiday, uh, the Hollywood peel, or um, you know something that gives you radiance right away. Um, it prevents from photo aging. It's also great for sensitive skin for all photo types. You have no worrying about all year long using this kind of uh, peel because it's a dual action. You're doing a peel and then you're infusing a cocktail of active substances for the destruction of the free radicals. So this is great for maintenance effects after um, heavy duty hyperpigmentation treatments after um, superficial scar treatments for acneic skin as well. It's multiple applications for it. And since it's not really uh, photosensitive, you can use it all year round. It's by the way, a great product to prepare skin for other peels. There's no downtime usually to it. I have to say to that, that whenever you're using chemical peels, make sure that your client has hydrated skin. It's the A and O for the cell communication as well. Our body works with electricity and cells communicate via electricity and they do need a certain, a certain water content in the skin to be um, proactive. So your BioC, as I said, preventative, maintenance, treatment, and it's for all phototype. Um, the active ingredients in your BioC are multiple. You have different acids. I'm not sure how versed you are in regards of the different acids. There's lactobionic in there, which um, is a form, it's an oxidized form of your lactose. So it's a larger molecule and it will keep actually the lipic layer intact as a hydrator. You have your mandelic acid in there, which is your antibacterial, antifungal, um, antiox and sebum regulating a product that has a, an extremely large molecular structure. And therefore mandelic acid is an ideal uh, ingredient for darker phototypes. Again, mandelic can be used almost all year round. The lactic acid that is in there is very powerful in regards of a moisturizing effect because it penetrates fairly fast. It's a small molecule and it's work, it works as an exfoliator. Glycolic, as we discussed that before, is also very high transdermal penetration, um, has a transdermal uh, high cap capacity of um, penetration and therefore it also works on the dermis because it can pass the basal layer and triggers growth factors from there. Um, the um, 
the product itself is easy to use in regards of treatment options. You have either a one-time application or you're doing five treatments weekly or bi-weekly apart. That depends on the age group. It depends also on the severity of the skin condition. So BioC, as I said, all year round, very much liked. Um, we have another one called Mandelage, which is the next slide. The Mandelage um, comes in a box like this. It's uh, about 30 ml in here. You're using only about 2 ml per treatment. That means you're getting actually 30 treatments out of one box. And um, man manda Mandelage is based mainly on your Mandelic acid. And it's... Um, it's a product that you can use for, it works really well for hyperpigmented scar tissue. Um, this is something that we approach anybody with phototypes four, five, and six as the first approach for hyperpigmentation treatments. It is super safe. Since the molecular structure is very large, we are not triggering the melanocytes to get activated. That means the existing hyperpigmentation in the skin can be safely exfoliated with it. At the same time, it will stop from further uh, distributing um, melanin into the keratinocytes. And it also cleans up the skin quite nicely because it's an antiox. So it will kill the free radicals that are also producing more hyperpigmentation down the road, okay? So this one too, we recommend usually for treatments about a week or two weeks apart, depending on the skin condition, if the skin is oily or, or more on the drier side. Um, we can also use it as an individual uh, prep treatment for a deeper penetration afterwards. You can use a mandalage on everybody, except of course, a phototype that is very sensitive. The BioC prior can be used for a more sensitive skin. Mandelage goes a little bit deeper. It's also a peel that you need to neutralize. So we have neutralizing peels and we have self-neutralizing peels. The advantage that you have with a neutralizing peel is you are totally in control of it. That means you have a, a time frame of up to five minutes for the, um, the intensity of the peel to work in the skin. And then you're using a neutralizing spray and you're making sure you're stopping the action. Okay, Mandelage is something that is sold worldwide as one of the number one peels. Um, the company is based in the Mediterranean area. So we have a lot of phototypes four, five, and six. And this is the go-to when you are starting out with hyperpigmentation treatments. We have the next one, which is called the lightning peel. Lightning is the right word for this peel because it really does lighten the skin. However, it does way, way more than that. It's not only for a, a deeper penetration of uh, active substances. We have multiple substances in here that actually help you to exfoliate, to hydrate, to inhibit your melanocytes, and also to make sure that free radicals are erased. So coming to the point of multiple active ingredients, what is not the case anymore like we did uh, years ago where we had a monopeel approaching only one group, cell group to be better. Um, science actually found out that this is not helping the skin. It can actually do further damage. So we want to have a combination of active substances working in synergy together and being delivered into the right spots where they work. And the lightning cream or lightning peel, or also people call it the yellow peel and the snake peel, you do have a lot of exfoliation with this one. It's based mainly on your retinol, but it also contains um, lactic acid. It has salicylic acid in there. It contains your arbutin and your kojic acid. These two, arbutin in particular, which actually goes into the melanocyte and puts the melanocyte more or less to sleep. So it makes it inactive. It doesn't kill it off like hydroquinone would do. It just makes it sleepy. That means I can clean up my skin now with this more aggressive approach without producing more hyperpigmentation or any other kind of inflammation that would produce hyperpigmentation. 
Um, the cream itself is one of the more expensive treatments out there, but very successful. And it will be used approximately in three treatments, four weeks apart. Um, the peeling effect from this one is actually sheet peeling. That means you have downtime. It's not a, a lighter peel like the mandalage that doesn't have downtime. This one really has downtime. And in Canada, the month of uh, June, July and August, we try not to do this peel because it does go into the dermis. Um, we're coming to the last one, which is our MCA 35%. Um, this is the deepest uh, peel from all of them, it depends on your dosaging. So if you would apply three layers of it, then you have the maximum depth achieved. We don't educate people in regards of that to go ahead and do three layers right away. We start out with one. So this one is a total bio-revitalization and redensifying effect um, on the epidermal and dermal layers. That means not only will it exfoliate the epidermal layers, all of them, it will also make sure that you are producing enough a myofibroblast growth factors produced at the basal layer to produce your collagen and elastin fibers, as well as your HA in the skin. It, it has the most um, effective, um, fast uh, um, um, results actually in regards of that, and it can be used on the neck, on the hands, for instance, on very thinning skin to be totally revived. For a more superficial hyperpigmentation, it works fantastic when we're going into the deeper hyperpigmentation. All of the peels actually cannot really exfoliate the dermis. They can only exfoliate the upper dermis, but what they are trying to achieve in the dermis is that they're trying to get the dermis free of radical um, free radicals as well as um, densifying the dermis. And when I densify my epidermis and dermis, my melanocytes actually, or they are not as prominent anymore. So they're suppressed slightly. And because of the thicker layer, it's not as translucent as it was before. So we can help a dermal hyperpigmentation by redensifying the skin. Um, what is super important in regards of hyperpigmentation treatments is, as you've seen before, the diagnostic. The Woods Lamp actually is the only tool that is out there to justify the depth of the hyperpigmentation. So we strongly suggest and recommend to, the use of a Woods Lamp, which is an inexpensive tool, um, to see how deep you are with your hyperpigmentation because you don't want to make some kind of promises to your client and then uh, you know you cannot achieve something. In combination with peels and these ones in particular and I went through very fast there is more to say to it so if you have interest my phone number or my email address at the end um, please uh, consider also other treatments with it because not every client has the same kind of hyperpigmentation issues. Not everybody is the same phototype and not everybody has the same time maybe available to um, go fast or slow with your process. So the usage of your microneedling, for instance, with transdermal solutions, sterile transdermal solutions, is a big help in hyperpigmentation treatments. Um, so, so is, of course, your home care, as Dr. Talani told you. These are little miracles that you can do with these products, but the big, big thing comes actually when the combination treatment is there. So I think um, I was fast enough. I <laughs> took a little bit less time than Dr. Talani, and I think you have lots of questions, so please go ahead and ask. That was, that was very good, very good. So... Um... Uh, so your info, I keep your information here, and but we will uh, send them, uh, send a, a follow up email to all the attendees and uh, giving them the current promotion we have for the the course that we, as I said, we don't focus on any brand. Uh, we are so honored to have um, uh, Regina from Innoestatic here to introduce their company, but we we tend in our course based on our accreditation and because of your educational center to make sure we focus on the understanding of chemical field and you're free to use any brand. 
But as I said, inostatic, we use inostatic ourselves uh, in our centers. So because the product is such a, has a good, such a good reputation and really good and patients really happy with it. And definitely you can, uh, you can uh, order from them. Did you mention anything? I can go through the, with the questions, but there's not, there's not lots of questions. A couple of them I answered, but do you want to talk about the promotions you have for the attendees of this event and our members that, uh, that you had? I didn't see anything here. If someone yeah, sure. wants to order, order how they can connect you, do you cover all Canada or, or they have yeah. to contact the rep in their... No, at the, at the moment, I'm the only educator in regards of all of Canada. So I would give nice. you a more uh, in-depth uh, consultation with it. Um, the uh, special that we always will offer to your uh, attendees is that we are offering 15% off of the opening order. Um, we usually give it a week, so it would be probably May 6th or something. And uh, anybody who orders, for instance, over the amount of $1,000 also will receive a free box of the BioC treatment package. Nice. And then I, I, I remember you did the training for our staff in Toronto and Vancouver. So do you going to do that for all the, because they, they still want to, uh, uh, of, of, of training, course, yes. the training is, you're going to have a training. Yes. Okay. Yes. Nice. 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 Okay. So I'm going to go through the questions. There was, uh, the, the, there was one question, the lady you showed who had a damage from the laser. Yeah. The one with the face PIH. How do you treat, obviously use the sunscreen, use the skincare. When it's not that inflamed, then you can do the chemical peel. What is your suggestion for the treatment of, of that patient? Yeah, so as I recall, this was a phototype 4 um, laser uh, damage or any kind of, uh, these kind of uh, injuries usually require uh, a little bit of a deeper penetration. However, I would start out with one of the mandalas treatment and then I would uh, probably uh, see that she uh, would continue with the lightning because of the rebuild of the dermis and the epidermis. Nice, nice. So I see the questions related to you, I directly ask you to answer how much downtime is required for moderate to deep chemical peels? Uh, that depends, again, on the hydration level of your client. As I mentioned to you, the best results, the fastest results, and the shortest recovery time is always when your client is prepped. So before you would start, for instance, with a medium deep peel, you would do a more superficial peel to make mm -hmm. sure they're hydrated enough and also that your stratum corneum is in an optimum uh, surface um, to absorb everything evenly and uh, with the home care of course as a support uh, that we strongly suggest as well we have sort of like an SOS kit where we put a skin repair and a hyaluronic acid with copper peptides in there for a faster speedier recovery usually the downtime is between three and five days for some people only three for other people it can be five days if your client is not on your side and uses other products it can be also longer Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Related question, because it's under the same question, are the peeling days predictable? The days that the patient is expecting to see the peeling, I'm assuming. Um, sometimes, yes. Um, there is a small amount of people uh, where we sometimes see a delay in peeling actions. Not everybody peels. So the word chemical peel actually is a little bit misleading. Uh, when I go back, for instance, to the BioC, there is that, such a minuscule peeling that the client doesn't see it because when they wash their face, um, the tiny little skin cells come off in the towel. They don't even feel it. They only feel that their skin becomes much smoother and softer. When I go with my uh, lightning or my um, MCA 35, then I know that I have peeling because my skin is already uh, disconnecting during the treatment sometimes I can see that I can see frosting in certain areas and I know it's this so then I know the client will definitely start peeling in the first 36 hours that is the average okay average. how long it usually two till three days and the client shouldn't be peeling anymore if the client peels longer that means either that the PrEP treatment wasn't done properly, that your client is dehydrated and is not using the right aftercare. 
Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So uh, what product is your choice of treating melasma? I'm assuming for the chemical peel approach. That's the question. So we're talking about the dermal melasma. hyperpigmentation. Melasma, yeah. yeah, the dermal hyperpigmentation. Dermal, um, yeah. it, usually it is the lightening one. Mm -hmm. um, but I would always start to prep with a mandalage. Prep with mandalage and then go with the... Like with, uh, yes, okay. Yeah, and then add your microneedling with uh, with a um, antiox solution, a, a vitamin C based uh, solution to really get rid of more of the free radicals in your dermis. You can redensify the skin with it at the same time. As I said, when you have a hyperpigmented dermis, which can come either, as you explained, from a hormonal point from inside, can be produced by the brain, which we don't know really how it works right now. Or, or it is uh, produced through outer damage, severe outer damage, where your um, melanocytes uh, st start to turn and to twist and their tentacles are reaching into the dermis and now um, the um, melanin is actually distributed into the dermis. In that case, you know, uh, it's great when you have a wood slam to see how much is in the dermis. Um, you cannot get rid really of hyperpigmentation in the dermis. We can only maintain. So then your other options come like your lasers, for instance, shutting down in, uh, melanocytes, which we try not to do because we know our melanocytes are there for a reason. They are there to prevent any kind of damage in our real skin. That means the dermis. Epidermis is just our rubber suit, more or less, protecting our skin. And when we are shutting down melanocytes, then we're breaking down the 99.9% .9 protection belt that helps us from radiation inside our body, right? So that's... that's the, go ahead, go ahead. That's the little problem we are having that we need to really diagnose upfront how much percentage of hyperpigmentation can we really treat effectively, which is all the, the epidermal part, and how much do we have to do in regards of the dermal hyperpigmentation? Yeah, that makes the uh, melasma treatment very challenging, you know, that has yes. been always. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. What pro uh, that was, okay, are uh, all the products mentioned safe to use for the for the darker skins, fit Patrick's of uh, five or six? Yes, they are. They are all safe because we have inhibitors in the more deeper ones. BioC doesn't require an inhibitor because we we don't really interfere too much in the dermis with it, okay? So we are, it's a gentle approach. Mandalage, the same thing. The molecule is very large. We are actually stopping the peel in action. We're in control. However, we're not in control of the lightning and we're not in control of the MCA 35%. And therefore we have built in inhibitors in form of arbutin and kojic acid. So they will hinder actually more breakouts with hyperpigmentation. They're putting melanocytes really into a quiet state of non-reaction. Mm -hmm. And this is something else too, when you're coming to home care, you should put these people before you're doing any kind of chemical peels already on a home care that includes inhibitors. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. The other question is, uh, what is the acid percentage in MCA 35? Um, it's, it's 35%. Yeah, that's what it is. Yes, yes. <laughs> I got chemical peel for myself. I have hyperpigmentation on nose and a small patch on both cheeks, which is increasing with time. I got get, is it sunspot or melasma? I think she says, I'm not sure which one is that. I got peel, but, but my skin start getting darker. Is it normal or it's a, it's a treatment of my skin? Yeah, okay, so the skin should get darker. That's a good sign in, in regards of the treatment because with a chemical peel, you are pushing your keratinocytes to the surface. And the more they're coming to the surface, the darker they get. So this should be a temporarily uh, good effect that would last maybe about five, six weeks, and then your skin should become lighter again. Nice, exactly. Um, also, the other question is regarding the process of ordering local reps. Can anyone order? I think you can explain again about this. Yeah, just contact me and I will forward you the link how you can register with us and then we'll go from there. 
would you mind if you type your email address one more time in the in the chat section right now as I'm going through that? Because at the end they might leave and might not have time to do that. Can the client be restricted from going outside? Yeah. When you're ready, I can ask the next question. How much time do we have? Uh, I, five more I'm minutes? okay. Official. Yeah. Okay, then. Perfect. Perfect. In the meantime, I, I see one of the, I'm assuming one of our international students is asking that I'm coming for the Congress and are you able to provide the full discount for the Congress because we have to pay for other expenses. I don't know about that. Uh, I can talk to the event team. Hopefully they can, they can help you with that. Hopefully they can and you can attend our event. So I see the email, but the email goes to only panelists. I'm just gonna send it to everyone. Yeah, that's, that's, that's supposed to be an eye directed. No that. problem. No problem. Yeah. I will yeah. send to everyone and then they have it so they can send you. The, okay, so you can save it if you if anyone wants to do that. Okay, so, so the next question is, would a client be restricted from going outside or to events the same date of chemical peel treatment? That depends again on the chemical peel, of course. Uh, we don't prevent anybody to go outside. However, on the same day, it's not a good choice because there is no sun protection. We talked about that before. Sun protection is necessary in order to prevent further damage and further activation of your melanocytes. And it can be actually quite um, uh, severe after a medium deep peel um, to go into daylight. We're not only talking really sunlight, we're talking UV light and UV light is out without the sun. That is activating your melanocytes. So the next day going out with the proper uh, prevention, the sun protection, um, there's nothing to say against it. However, some people prefer staying home because with certain peel applications, you have skin that feels like paper and it's very tight and they don't look the same. We also have to consider right now still the mask wearing, okay? So after your peel application, we would love to have you going back home without wearing the mask for at least about 24 hours. The skin does need that time of length to be a little bit more protected again. Nice. How many days are required for pre preparation prior to initial treatment? Again, depends on the on the uh, peel. Again, when we're talking about a deeper peel and your client's age and phototype and the severeness, sometimes you might have to start even four weeks prior. Sometimes it's a week prior. That's an individual. Okay, very good. I know that, uh, as I know, the 30% is the maximum is allowed in Canada. Has, the, has it changed? Uh, percentages have uh, not much to say in regards of any kind of active substances. Um, the percentage is only part of appeal. What mm -hmm. is more important would be your a pH and it is the base solution and the combination of all the other factors. Um, you are 30 percent for instance if you are an esthetician you will have limitations with certain acids absolutely. If you are a nurse or a doctor you do not have limitations here in Canada. This is also why we're talking about the MCA 35. MCA 35 is absolutely prohibited to be used by estheticians. Makes sense. Um, is it normal to be very dry after treatment? Any solution to prevent from dryness and itchiness after treatment? Yeah, so as I said, that some people are more sensitive and they do have the tendency towards a much drier skin. We have an SOS kit in regards of that. We always make sure after a chemical peel or other micro injury treatments that the client has two products to be used exclusively for at least three days. Then they can go back to their own regime if they want to. And that prevents actually dryness. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, there is one question about our course on 30th. Are we using the uh, inostatic chemical peel on the course? Yes, we have ordered only from them and we are very happy with their products and we're gonna use their line of products during the course. Uh, are any recommendation where to buy a good quality wood lamp? I don't know, I can ask my uh, staff and then uh, probably we can send to everyone. I don't, we don't know anyone and we don't support any brands at the moment, but I think you can search yourself and based on the review, find the best one. Do you know anyone that you recommend or? Actually, actually, you know what? I got mine on Amazon a couple of years ago and my clients too. It's anywhere. Don't go with a price range of 80 or a hundred dollars. Look for about two till $300. That's a good wood slam. Okay. It has to be just a mirror. You need to darken the room. You have enough light underneath and uh, it's a simple tool everybody can use. Very tricky when you talk about the price because two or 300 dollars two months ago maybe right now is five hundred dollars just for oh, your see, I <laughs> everything is growing so fast that's, like price it's that's crazy possible. yeah crazy. that's possible <laughs> yes 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 anyways okay we can we i think we were very on time so we don't see any other question thank you so much for being here someone says thank you love the webinar thank you for being here today thank you and, for having uh, me. i hope you enjoyed the the session as i said we are we are working hard to make a series of webinars and informations to get into non-injectables because that support is missing. A lot of uh, uh, members and students, when they come to organizations such as ours, they all say, we want to do Botox and filler. That's the first question they say, I want a Botox and filler. But the reality is, um, I, maybe this is not the right, right term I use, but when it comes to money making in this field, there are lots of ways to do that. I'm sorry, I'm saying it very straightforward. Uh, that's why we want to make sure to help our members to really get on their feet in this field. And there are lots of less uh, aggressive, probably cheaper ways of uh, making a good income in the field when you have the line of patients anyways, why not? But you have to have a knowledge of that. And it's not too difficult. And we are trying our best to do that. We are just starting the last couple of months. We decided to do that. And we are trying to work hard to uh, cover all the angles of non-injectables. So soon you will hear more activities on our end and we bring the companies to help us, of course. And thanks again. And thank you, Regina, for being with us. We really appreciate that. I uh, hope to see you in Toronto, probably when I get there or during the event of our Congress. Yes, we will. No more questions. If you don't want to add anything, so I would uh, end the session. Wonderful. Amazing, amazing. All of Thank you, me. a good weekend, okay? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for being your Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.